On this AI breakdown brief, we've got updates from Bing, new tools for AI developers, an assessment of AGI's prospects from a giant in the space, and a warning from Meta. Welcome back to the AI breakdown brief, all the AI headlines you need in five minutes or less. Today, we start with Microsoft Bing getting a huge number of upgrades around its chatbot. And I got to tell you, I'm still not over caring about what Microsoft is doing, but here we are. In short, Microsoft has announced a set of Bing chat plugins. Now, this follows from ChatGPT doing something similar. In fact, later on the main breakdown episode, we're going to talk a lot about one ChatGPT plugin called Code Interpreter. But anyways, Bing has followed suit and is offering all sorts of new ways for partners such as open table and kayak and things like that to integrate with Bing chat so that you can use that same chat GPT style interface or chatbot interface to go out and do the things that you would normally do. Other updates include multimodal answers. So answers that include visuals, charts, graphs, and other non-text formats. On top of that, they're also trying to add in some UI upgrades, such as chat staying contemporary as you click around the web. Lastly, there is no longer a waitlist for Bing Chat. That means anyone who wants it can get it. Now, a lot of folks have pointed out what Pete from the Neuron here does. Chat GPT and Bing Chat keep colliding, and it's unclear how this will end. Why pay for Chat GPT Plus when Bing Chat also uses GPT-4? If you're paying for Plus, why use Bing Chat when Chat GPT will have browsing soon? And now both have plugins. Is it a battle or just an eventual convergence? We'll have to wait and see. Speaking of ChatGPT, Meta is warning about ChatGPT imposters, and this feels like it was absolutely inevitable. Their latest security report says that there's a lot of malware that's now masquerading as ChatGPT or Bing Chat. So if you are seeing an advertisement or just a promotion of some new chat interface that uses these terms, be extremely cautious. Next, we turn to some updates for AI developers. A few days ago, McKay Wrigley wrote, Replit is a sleeping AI giant, unbelievably excited to see how their new custom code models perform. They're already experimenting with stuff like auto app generation with AI agents. It was already the IDE of the future, but it might be the AI company of the future too. That pronouncement got a little bit more clout today as Replit announced that they developed their own new LLM. This is meant to supercharge the development process and it's being released under a commercial ready open source license. Now on top of that, a company called Modular just released a programming language called Mojo. It's being described as Python-like and it's specifically designed for AI applications. Mark Tenenholtz here says, what programming language will run AGI? Well, it might be Mojo. He says it's truly parallelizable, fully compatible with all Python packages and has speed boosts from types, but not required. I'm seeing a ton of chatter about Mojo, even though it has just come out. Speaking of AGI, a new interview with Google DeepMind CEO Demis Hassabis is just out, and he says that we could see some form of AGI within the next few years. He says the progress in the last few years has been pretty incredible. I don't see any reason why that progress is going to slow down. I think it may even accelerate. So I think we could be just a few years, maybe within a decade away. Now, Demis does say that we should be a little wary, saying I would advocate developing these types of AGI technologies in a cautious manner using the scientific method where you try and do very careful controlled experiments to understand what the underlying system does. The challenge is whether that's of course possible in a world where every company is competing to get these new technologies out faster than their peers. That was one of the concerns expressed by Jeffrey Hinton when he left Google and gave his first set of interviews a couple days ago. Finally, speaking of concerns, there is a meeting today at the White House between Vice President Kamala Harris and the CEOs of companies like OpenAI, Google, Microsoft, and Anthropic. So we will see what comes out of that and whether it sets a path in terms of how the U.S. might think about regulating or at least engaging with AI going forward. That's it for today's brief, but stay tuned for today's AI Breakdown.